Today on the Rumors Comedy Cast, Bobby Slayton says some things he wishes Demi Lovato never hears. This week's episode features music by Uncle Seth. Follow us on Twitter, YouTube, iTunes, and share with your friends on Facebook at Rumors Comedy. Hello, everybody. We are. Are we rolling? I think I think we're, we're okay. rolling. We're, we're here with the Bobby Slayton Show here at my fair at Rumors Comedy Club. I'm here with a young man named uh, it's Bobby. Dan. It's Andrew. Dan. No, it's Dan. Okay. It's Dan. Thank uh, you. Thank right, you. This is your show. Intro. It's my show. Well, it's our show. I'm, we're glad you're here. You know, I just spent 15 minutes cleaning these glasses. You mm-hmm. asked me why I was doing this. Yeah. Because now that I'm 60 years old this month, you know, which is hard to, I can't even fathom it. But, you know, about 15 years ago, I started wearing reading glasses. So I go to like the dollar store to buy reading yeah. glasses. You get cheap reading glasses. Hundreds there. and hundreds of pairs because you sit on them, you break them, you lose them. And since they're dollar glasses, they fall apart. So I finally went to Lens Crafters. You know, you have the Lens Great. Crafters. We there. have Lens Crafters. And, they, and, I, and I bought these really those expensive. Those are nice. Like those are Ray Bans. Those are serious. But, but they're three different lenses. So mm. I've only been wearing for a couple of months. And they drive me crazy because one is for far distance, one is for computers, one is for reading. So you have these three different lenses and one pair of glasses. You know, if you wear glasses your whole life, you know, you're used to it. But when you're not wearing them all the time. So I keep thinking they're dirty, but they're not. I'm just not looking at them the proper way. And it's driving me up a wall. Well, that was the, the glasses intro to Rumors Comedy Cast. Yeah, okay. yeah, anyway, yeah, that was the yeah, intro. Great introduction. Yeah, it was a good intro. Done? Okay, fine. This is uh, episode 18. I'm Dan Verbo, Bobby Slayton in town here at Rumors. Yeah. How, how'd great you show like? tonight. Great show tonight. Did you have fun? You looked like you were having a great time. Well, that's how it looked. It was fine. <laughs> it was fine. No, you know what? It's like... It's if I don't work for three or four days, yeah. it takes me a couple of days to get back into it. I don't care how long I've been doing it. I think Jerry Seinfeld even said the same thing, that if you're off for a couple of days, you know, it goes out of your, it, you got to you gotta do it every day. Yeah. And if you take three or four days off, it's like working out. You got to stretch and you got to, you lose the it's rhythm like you're starting and... all over again. And even after almost 40 years of doing this, it's still every night. And I said to Tyler, who runs a club, you know, you come to Canada and Canada is a lot like the States, but you got to, hey, you got Taco Bell up here. You don't have Macy's, but you have the Bay. You don't have Jamba Juice, but you have Jugo Juice. You don't have kind of Shop Rimmage. You know I mean? but, but it used to be that way in the States, mm-hmm. where 30, 40 years ago when I started out, there was no Macy's, you know, in California. There was no Coors Beer, you know, east of the Rockies. There was no, but now, between Netflix and HBO and Showtime and Comedy Channel and Comedy Central... Everything's become homogenized, and everybody, yeah. for the most part, sees everything. And the thing about Canada, you know more about the states. Yeah. Like you know, you'll know about Obama. You'll know about uh, what goes on in, in you know, Ferguson. But people in the states are so stupid and so it's so secular that in different states, it's amazing how many people don't know anything about Canada. They don't know who the prime minister is. Uh, you still get young kids under thirty who can't name the four Beatles. You know, when I played England uh, for the first time, I did a show for the BBC about, I don't remember, 20 years ago, yeah. and you go to Leicester Square, and there's, there's a Gap, and there's a, a Hard Rock, and there's a Burger King, and they know everything about United States politics, and about pop culture, but people in this country, or my country, know yeah. nothing about anything else. So you gotta ask people, you have this here, you have that there, you know, there's a big gay population, you have Mexicans. Well, yeah, like before the show, kind of running through what's going on. But like, why do you think? Why do you think it is that Americans don't know? Because they're stupid. But like, do you think it's like a lack of like education? Like, it seems like they want to. Like, people just don't want to know. People or, is, pro- or do we just get it slammed down our throats here? So people I feel like are horrible. People are pretty horrible everywhere. You know. I mean, look, I'm an idiot, and I'm smarter <laughs> than ninety five percent of the people in North America, and I'm a fucking moron. You know. Uh, I've heard Howard Stern and David Letterman say that, and they're smarter than I am. But, but you know, when I watch John Stewart and Bill Maher, I love their shows, and I know nothing about politics. I know nothing about... But when I talk to people, I find that people don't know anything. You know, they buy White Zinfandel, because they think it's a great wine. They think Roger Moore is a better James Bond than Sean Connery. They're like Journey, not the Rolling Stones. People are just fucking stupid. And I'm just glad global warming's coming. I'm glad it's going to be over in 30, 40 years. Well, if, but if people weren't stupid, you wouldn't have material. You got You need the stupid you people to we you, know the You're exactly goodness. right about that, and you, you know that's the thing about comedy. You know, you know that. Yeah. That you know, my, people say, people say to my wife all the time, "What makes Bobby mad?" And she goes, "Air makes him mad." <laughs> you know, it's just like I get on a plane and I, I, I just you know, you go to Vegas and you go to a four star restaurant and see people in shorts and flip flops. I don't get dressed up, but. At least wear a clean t-shirt, t-shirt, <laughs> you fat redneck fuck. You know, at least people don't care. 
You know? They don't give a shit anymore. You know, there, there was one time, the true story, it, it, it was about, oh my God, probably 15, 20 years ago. I walk out of a radio station in Rochester, New York, and some giant fat guy, I mean giant fat guy, was <laughs> Not an average the, fat guy, giant fat guy, the monster. Sidewalk, Right outside of Kentucky Fried Chicken, which now they call KFC. So they don't need the word fried. So, <laughs> see, and he was having a heart attack. He was choking. And part of me was going, should I go help this guy, give him out the mouth, or fuck him? You know, he's so fat. He's got a bucket of fried chicken, you fat fuck. You need to die. You know, <laughs> we need to thin out the herd. It's like when people get hit by a train. Do I really care? There's no reason to ever get hit by a train. No, you know, they fucking, the lights are flashing. Don't go. No, you never... You know, you always hear the story, his car got stuck on the train tracks. The thing, whatever it is. I'm talking about people walking on a train track. You don't need to get hit by a train. No. It's not a bullet. It's not a stray bullet. It's not like you're in a schoolyard and some drunk ran into the swing set and killed your kid. It's a fucking train track. A train is coming eventually. You know, we need to thin out the herd. Get off the These people need track. to die. You know. So you're still obviously, well, you... How many shows? So you're still traveling around a lot and, and doing stand-up. How many shows do you do in a year? I don't know, a lot. Like, because you're on the road a lot. Right? I'm on the road a lot. You know I'm on the road a lot? Because I'm not on TV right now. And I'm on the road a lot. You know, you know. I remember years ago, Ellen DeGeneres, who was, opened up for me when she was a young kid, uh, as did everybody, as did Ray <laughs> Romano, as did Roseanne Barr, Bill Hicks, uh, Pat Oswalt, Judd Apatow, Ron wow. White. They're all my opening acts. And went on to greatness. It's like, you know who Typhoid Mary was? No. No, because you're a retarded fuck like everybody else. <laughs> Stay away from the train tracks. Um, typhoid Mary was a nurse who had the typhoid gene, but she didn't actually have typhoid. But everybody she came in t- contact with got, got it. typhoid. Okay. I have the fame gene. I have the fame gene inside of me. Even though I'm that famous, everybody I come in contact with gets famous. It won't happen to you. Well, well probably not. Like, well, I was excited for two Rob seconds. Schneider, but not. David Spade, it could happen to you. could happen. Know. That's why I'm trying to be nice to you. Yeah. But everybody I've been nice to you never did anything for me, so go fuck <laughs> yourself. Anyway, I'm Bobby Slade. But you are you Can are I get famous, back to though. me? Can you shut up for me? Let me get back to me. Bobby Slade, Rumors Comedy Club. Um, no, I'm sorry. What, what, <laughs> no, I said, what, but what, you what? are. You, you've been in movies. Like, you're... You've been in been Get Shorty, Dream, Wonder, Dream, Dream Girls, Girls. Sorry, yeah, Wonder Girls, but like you've done like Family Guy. Family Guy. How, okay, well, I wonder how fun is Family Guy? Like, do, like I the did one episode. episode. Yeah. To show you what a retard I am, I'll show you what a retard I am. So <laughs> here's what I got a Family Guy. Before the show went on the air, it's been like 15 years now. Yeah. It's, it's amazing how fast things go by, but. I used to do a lot of voiceover work and a lot of commercials. And um, now a lot of the stuff, you know, a lot of film actors are doing television, a lot of television actors are doing commercials, and a lot of commercial actors are out of work. You know, it, it's, it's tough out there. It's tough out there, mm-hmm. folks. So about 15 years ago, I was working a lot. I was doing a lot of radio commercials, a lot of uh, TV commercials. I was doing, and I get a call. Um, and I was, I was in between gigs, and yeah. I never get sick. I had the flu. I come home, and it was raining. I'll never forget this. I, I was packing, unpacking, a story of my life, you know. So I get a call from my manager, my voiceover agent, whatever, and they said, They're, they want you to read for this new animated series, a pilot. And most of the time, these pilots never, never go. They never go. It's they never go. And, and I never get them. Even when I get them, they never go. And... I said, you know what? I, I said, I, I, I just came home yesterday. I've got the flu. Um, I'm leaving tomorrow. I, I got a pass on this. Yeah. So my voice agent calls me back. He goes, no, listen, they really want to see you. They really want to see you with this pilot. Let me send you the, um, I think they had fax machines then. Is it, I don't even remember. <laughs> they sent a Is script it, to it, me it, somehow. Let, let me get, but they didn't have the internet. Yeah. So, so let me send you these. Um, it was like 25 years. It was a long time ago. So let me get you the sides. And, uh, and I'm looking at this. This is really stupid. This is not going anywhere. Yeah. I'm playing this Indian chief. I'm going, Indian, Indian chief. They up here don't call them Indians. Aboriginal, Aboriginal chief. Native Americans. Whatever. Yeah. Back then, I'm an Indian chief, the head of a casino. And I'm, I, me, my voice, the head of a casino, I said, I don't want to read for this. And I never pass on anything. But I said, it's raining out. I'm leaving tomorrow. They, they call me back again. My agent says to me, Look, this Seth MacFarlane guy, the producer creator, really likes you. He really wants to see you. Can we do it over the phone? And I've never done a commercial 
audition up. How do you even do it? Like, is the quality good enough? Like, what? how do you even do it? Well, wait, no, he just wants to hear my voice. Oh, he just wanted to hear. He okay, so you're just reading read. over the. Okay, sorry, so I thought I'm they were recording sick. for the I'm show. Taking, I'm taking all kinds of Sudafed, Nadville. And, <laughs> and I, I go, so I read this part. But I read the part. And Seth McFarlane. Yeah. Oh, I guess it was him. Yeah, it's fine. My agent calls me an hour later and says, they want you to do it. They want you to come in and be this Indian chief for this episode of Family Guy. So the next week, I go in, and Seth MacFarlane is doing all these voices. Meanwhile, you got to remember, the show had not been on TV yet. Yeah. So he's doing the dog and the baby, and I go, this is a stupid show. This show's never going anywhere. <laughs> this, show's, this show's never getting Dumb. on top. Anyway, I read for it, and Family, go got, Family Guy gets on TV, and people start going, this is really great. I watched your show. It was really kind of dumb. But, you know, I'm on the road all the time. So after like four or five episodes, I'm watching this family guy. And I'm going, this is really fucking funny. This is brilliant. I'm on, I think, the first season, seventh, eighth episode. I'm watching it. I'm going, this is great. This is brilliant. And meanwhile, I thought the show was stupid. I didn't think it was going anywhere. I didn't want to read for it. And that's why Seth MacFarlane is now a billionaire, creator of one of the greatest shows in the history of not only animation, of television, and I'm sitting here with some idiot named Dan at Rupert's Comedy Club. After I think, hours, well, I who's, think who's winning here? I don't I think yeah. Seth's probably doing something yeah. brutal that's right now. That's why I'm now. a moron. Having a good time here. I'm having a drink and story time. Yeah. But so that epi- that yeah, I drank that story out any longer, but, but it just no, goes to show you what I know about anything. <laughs> But that episode, now correct me if I'm wrong, is that the one Oh, I will where, correct you. I will correct you. Even if you're right, I'm going to correct you. Peter, like, gets a spirit animal. Is that the one? The he got a, a vision quest. The vision quest. Yeah, there you go. It was a, now, did you Google that or did you remember that? No, I remember that episode. And I remember... You went on a vision quest, and I'm the Indian chief. And the last voice you expect <laughs> to come out of an Indian chief... I'll tell you another yeah. amazing, long, <laughs> drawn-out story. Oh, here we go. Buckle I was up. the voice of the Pink Panther. You know the Pink Panther? Yeah, yeah. The Pink Panther How did you had that? never spoken before. And if you do research on the Pink Panther, in the 1960s, they did a, a quick little pilot. Rich Little was the voice of the Panther. It never went anywhere. And they never showed it because mm-hmm. the Panther was never supposed to speak. So back in the 90s, right after Roger Rabbit came out, Roger Rabbit was a state of animation at the time. Animation's got even better where you put live action and with animation. With animation. Yeah. And it's been done before. Anchors Away, Gene Kelly and Frank Sinatra, Uncle Remus, you know, with the you know, butterflies and the birds, Disney did it. It had been done before and it had been done well, but nobody ever did it as well as Roger Rabbit. So when Roger Rabbit came out, um, MGM CBS came up with this pilot where the Pink Panther would be animated and would interact with a live cast. And they, they, they did this pilot where the Pink Panther comes to life. It was like the Purple Rose of Cairo. Yeah. Woody Allen. And the Panther jumps off the screen, the movie theater's on fire, and he can't get back into the animation world. So my manager heard about this and puts me up for the part of the Pink Panther. And CBS says, look, we love Bobby Slate. We know his work, but his <laughs> voice is the last voice we expect <laughs> to come out of. The Pink Panther. You know, I expect they I wanted expect like a Pepe Le Pew, you know, a romantic, like a, you know, like a romantic skunk or something, or, the or really, James Bond, yeah. like, you know, David Niven, Sean Connery. So I guess <laughs> what happened was <laughs> they looked at every voice, listened to every voiceover actor from here to Shanghai, every waiter, every comic, and they couldn't find the voice of the Pink Panther. And they said, Bobby's voice is so wrong for this. Maybe he'd be perfect for the voice of the Pink Panther. And we shot a pilot. For CBS, yeah, and I was a voice of the Pink Panther. It's so wrong, it's right. And yeah, it, uh, Terry Hatcher was in the pilot. Uh, this yeah. kid Charlie Schlatter, who was the kid from Oh God with George Burns. If you go on IMDb, mm-hmm. CBS, MGM Television has erased every reference to this pilot. I don't why? know why. Maybe it has something. Is it like a copy? It. No, I'm, yeah, I have. You were in it. Just... I have a copy of it. I have a copy of it. Should I upload it? Huh? Upload it to the internet. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Waiting I, for your moment? Because, yeah, I'm waiting. To, I'm just, well, I'm, I'm writing a book. In it. Oh, but yeah. I was a, anyway, about two years later, they did a pilot with that Max Headroom guy. Yeah. With the voice of the Pink Panther. It fucking sucked. And, uh, yeah, what was that Max Headroom If you come thing? to my house, I will, as the original voice of the Pink Panther, tell you how much that pilot sucked. But that was another voiceover thing that never went anywhere. Yeah. I, w- I was the Pink Panther. What was the best uh, commercial you ever voiced over? The best one, like like the yeah, like where you were like you, like you act, it was a product you were actually like yeah I could. There were no good commercials. <laughs> There's no such thing as a good one. There were no. Good They're ones. just all bad. 
You don't know good ones. I was uh, like diaper commercials, like any like. I weird was a talking shit. polar bear for uh, <laughs> McFlurries for for McDonald's. I was actually a talking polar bear for Kmart. I was a polar bear twice. <laughs> see, I, was, I can see, I can see the polar bear. I was a polar bear in a live action show called Sunny with a Chance with this horrible little bitch Demi Lovato. I played a <laughs> disgruntled kitty show host. That's in my book also. She was a horrible little cunt. How has she gotten better? How did, old was did she? Did you say cunt here? Oh, yeah, we're fully. This is uh, all rated explicit. Uh, I was a polar bear three times. Live action polar bear, twice on the commercial. But that was the worst experience I ever had. I was working with Demi Lovato for the Disney Channel. Okay, so when you, were you like, when you say you were a polar bear, you're talking like full costume polar bear. Full polar polar bear. Holy shit. Full yeah, I I'm was, sure it wasn't cold. I'm sure it was boiling in that. Well, thing. I wasn't a polar bear. I was a, a kitty show host. It, it, it's on YouTube. You can see yeah. me as Paulie the Polar Bear. <laughs> me and Demi Lovato. It was a, it was a goddamn nightmare. What was what was her problem? Like she was just like just stuck up, or like she's like you, just an just asshole. me. Like I have to go into the trailer <laughs> shortly. And I heard she's gotten better. I don't want to sit bad mouth in some teenage no, anorexic no, lunatic. But um, yeah, we don't want to do that here. Yeah, not at all. No, no, not at all. No, that's not, that's not what we do. The fact there's a polar bear three times. That's got to mean something. That's got to be some. Maybe that's your, your vision quest. And a white polar bear. Not a, not like a well, bear, but a polar bear. Really white polar bear. Well, I'd expect you to be a white polar bear. It's like there's no, there's no black polar yeah, bears. No, there's black bears. bears. No, but, but um, yeah, but it's just kind of funny. I played a polar bear three times. Yeah, have you ever thought about talking about being a polar bear on stage? No. No, never. No, no, never. <laughs> No, never. Yeah, but white polar bear. That, that's a wine. Yeah, well, no you're more of the... Yeah, well, yeah. Like, like so why do you ask me a good question? What's a good question? What, I, you I know, know there's, there's so many. Show. I know, but there's so it's many your questions. Show, I Dan. felt like I, I touched on a lot of good questions. Um, hey, G, what, what do you have here? No, these are just personal Detroit, notes. my movies, Bandits, Dream Girls. Um, yeah, that's just a few little things we wanted to touch you know, on. Every part I've ever played <laughs> has been a fast-talking New York show. You know... When well, I that's did, what you are, right? Yeah, I've <laughs> never been able to. You know, the one real person I played was Joey Bishop, the Rat Pack movie for HBO. You know, it was Ray Liotta playing Frank Sinatra, the great Don Cheadle playing Sammy. You know, um, um, you know Joe Montana playing Dean Martin, and me. And it was like almost like the real Joey Bishop because you know you with these three giant showbiz heads on Mount Rushmore. They and. and Joey Bishop. I was like Tito Jackson. You're part of the I'm family, on the side. I'm right here. Not the talent that yeah. the Giants had. So people said to me, God, you were so good as Joey Bishop. I go, I play a fast talking, five foot nine Jew comic from the East Coast. It wasn't like Robert De Niro gaining weight for, you know, Raging, <laughs> Raging Bull. Bullard, yeah. or, or, you know, Meryl Streep learning how to play violin and learning a German accent for some. It was just me being me. Every part I've ever played. But that's good though. That's that's you, and that's you, it's right there. Yeah. And like, but what was it like working with Cheadle and those and Leota? Like, what did, were they like larger than life as they seem, or were they like casual? You just shoot the shit. It with wasn't them me and, working with you, Dan. It was well, great. I know. Like this it was is great, better. but it wasn't the magic of being here in Winnipeg and Rumors with Dan. There's a long list. By of the way, you talk about multifaceted. Yeah, you know, you look at Ray Liotta. He's a great actor, but like myself on a much higher level, plays this kind of psychopath, and, you know, good fellas, and always the same character. Yet you not only have a podcast, not only MC the show tonight, but you also picked me up. You're a driver. I did. You're an MC. You're a podcast host. You're, you know, the things are coming up. Multifaceted. Yeah, you know, I really feel you know, you're, it's, it's amazing to me. Well, here. thank you, Bobby. I really feel like my no driving is the best part of those things. I'm really good at that. We made it, it here. It Sans the, accident. It was the best. It part. was good. And it wasn't and I, even that good. That wasn't <laughs> well, come down to Rumors to see Bobby Slayton. He's here Friday, Saturday, because this is Thursday. So come back, check him out. Follow him on Twitter at. Oh, well, Bobby Slayton, Pitbull of Comedy. Pitbull, Pitbull of Comedy. They call me, we didn't even get into that, but I'm going to get rid of that stupid handle. But that, you're going to get rid. You're going to get rid of the Pitbull. It's been going on for too long. Pitbull of Comedy. I'm on. Uh, uh, you know, Bobby Slayton and whatever. Whatever. Find I hate all, all the internet media stuff. You got to do it, though. This stuff's you got to really hit important. it. Yeah, you got to grind it. It's really important. You know, I had one of the first podcasts before podcasts were podcasts. There was something called Comedy. There was a uh, comedy network called Comedy World, which you probably never heard of. No, never have. About 15 years ago, when internet radio first started becoming big, mm -hmm. there was this upstart 
internet um, company. You know, they made a lot of money in the, uh, you know, Silicon Valley. You know, all that. They all started making all those bucks. They decided, we're going to do internet radio. It's going to be the next big thing, which it was. But when they did it, nobody was listening back then. Yeah, they no, lost who? hundreds of thousands, maybe <laughs> millions of dollars. Not this big. That's another thing. I blaze the trail for young kids like you. Your first ever comedy podcast. Yeah. Bobby Slayton. Yeah. But yeah, come down to Rumors this weekend. Check them out. Find them on the internet. And uh, we'll see you next time on the Rumors Comedy Cast. All right. That was great. It's great. I was great. It's good. Keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. Just roll it. Roll it all night. Thanks for doing it. You can give you me right back, right? Yeah, I'll give you right home. Because you really are the best at driving. I know. This is not that good at but the driving the comedy thing, thing is just you know, the driving the thing. Pan. You were so good at that, and then you did a good job as the MC. You brought me in, but then when you get to the podcast, you were just you're kind of a fuck up. Are we still rolling? No, make sure we're not rolling. No, we're not. You, it's no, we're not rolling. But you were just no. Make sure you're rolling, but don't roll. Make sure you're not rolling. But you know, you're just not good at this. You made me very uncomfortable. I never get uncomfortable because yeah, I I, I played in front of stadium full of people. But you just not. This is not your thing. But the driving. You know, when you pick me up. Even though you didn't open the car door for me. You, you, had the, you had the AC at the right temperature. It was just you how you, know, it was, was 24, really nice. just you what you said. You be very comfortable with the driving here. But this, this not so much. No, you're not good at this. No, well, well maybe we'll just good. quit it. <laughs> we'll just lay it out, we'll quit it. But this is not so long. No, you're really just, and, and as a person, you're kind of an asshole. We're not still rolling, right? <laughs> no, we're not rolling. And I, but, but as a driver, you were just terrific. It would have been better if I would have been in the back seat and would have had like a limo with one. And there's like a glass, yeah, a like glass. A, yeah, right so you could have you. your own space. Talking, talking to you, you're not good with people. I see how the waitresses don't like you. I see you make everybody uptight. But the driving, terrific. Thank God we're not on. Thank God. Okay. All right, let's go home. <laughs> <laughs> how was that? That was awesome.